Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to come and share some information about another fascinating lung condition. And this is something called systemic sclerosis associated interstitial lung disease. I'm sorry about all the acronyms about this SSCILD, but it's really an important condition to know about because it ties together two different things. So there is, on the one hand, the interstitial lung disease, and I'll tell you what this means in a second, and on the other hand is this systemic sclerosis. Now, first let's start with systemic sclerosis. This is a condition that can affect many organs of the body. Sometimes it can be known as scleroderma, and depending on whether it's very extensive or more limited, it can have different names. So it can be called limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis, diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis, or systemic sclerosis without involvement of the skin. So sorry to, to give you all these inf bits of information, but basically it's a condition that affects the skin. So we're starting with that one. Generally, people who have systemic sclerosis, they have issues with puffy fingers, right? So the fingers are a little bit puffy. And there's a bit of skin thickening around the fingers. So there may be also some lesions around the fingertips. There may be dilated capillary vessels somewhere around here or around the nose or somewhere else on the skin. These are called teleangiectasias. There may also be something called a Raynaud's phenomenon. So this is when basically one finger, for example, when you're going in the cold, may turn suddenly white the tip of the finger may go white and then it may go towards a purple color and then back to normal. And this sort of happens suddenly every now and then. In addition, in this condition called systemic sclerosis, you may also have other features, but I won't necessarily go over everything in this video. It's just to make you aware that it's a condition that generally affects the skin. It's associated with skin thickening and hardening. And there are some antibodies that can be detected in the blood because this is an autoimmune condition. So your immune system attacks its own tissues and that's what causes this condition. However, another important feature of systemic sclerosis is that in many cases, not necessarily the majority, but in quite a significant number of cases, it can also affect the lungs. So it may seem completely unrelated, but those antibodies that do affect the skin and that lead to this immune response and this thickening in the, the skin may lead to thickening of the tissue of the lung. So it's a similar process, but it happens in the skin and in the lung at the same time. And this is what we call the interstitial lung disease part. So interstitial lung disease just means that there is a condition affecting the tissues of the lung. There's hardening, there's thickening of the tissues. This makes it harder to breathe. And it can be progressive as the disease gets worse. If the lungs get progressively hardened, more fibrosed, more thickened, scarred, breathing can be affected. Coughing can occur. All these things can happen and it can lead to respiratory failure. And actually, it is considered that the lung involvement in systemic sclerosis in this condition uh, is actually the leading cause of death it's for, for patients who are affected with systemic sclerosis. So it's a serious complication when you have lung involvement, when you have this skin condition, this skin autoimmune condition called systemic sclerosis. Another thing that can happen in systemic sclerosis is that you may get something called pulmonary arterial hypertension. So this is when the pressure between the heart and the lungs in the artery that leads from the heart to the lungs, basically to circulate the blood through the lungs, that pressure is increased. And that can sometimes lead to very significant breathlessness because the blood cannot circulate well to catch enough oxygen as it circulates through the lungs. So it's a fairly common complication as well that can happen in addition to the lung fibrosis, the lung scarring that can happen with, with this condition. So just this was just to sort of give you an overview that this condition exists. It's called systemic sclerosis associated interstitial lung disease. And it's something that can be treated generally by involving a rheumatologist and a pulmonologist. It's a team approach. Generally, not one specialist treats everything because uh, there is a lot of overlap regarding treatment. Now, in mild cases where there's not a lot of lung involvement or 
the skin involvement is minimal. Observation may be all that is needed at the beginning. We just keep an eye on things, make sure it's not really getting worse. But we're watch with something called watchful waiting. We are careful in case things get worse. Because if they do get worse, we may need to treat with immunosuppression. Immunosuppression is a form of treatment. There can be many agents that can be given. This just means that we are trying to reduce the immune response. We're trying to reduce that load of antibodies that are produced that target these tissues in the skin, in the, in the lungs, because that can prevent further worsening. So sometimes we may need to resort to these sort of therapies like cyclophosphamide, like mycophenolate. This is, these are potential examples of treatments that can be given in systemic sclerosis. And then basically if the lungs are the predominant problem, so if there's a lot of lung fibrosis and it tends to progress over time and we, we tend to monitor this condition with lung function, so breathing tests over time. If these breathing tests tend to go down, if things go down, if the imaging gets worse, we do CT scans every year, every two years, every three years, and we see that there's a progression, things are getting worse, that there's more fibrosis, more scarring of the lungs. In that case, we need to try to intervene for the lungs as well, because even despite the immunosuppression, despite the treatments for the skin, for the systemic sclerosis, sometimes we may need to slow down the scarring process and there are medications that are approved for this reason in this condition uh, one such medication is called nintedanib which is an antifibrotic medication for the lungs it does not reverse the problem it does not fix the fibrosis but it can slow down its progression over the years so this is actually quite helpful because progression in systemic sclerosis is not that quick but it can be problematic over a long period of time. These are conditions that don't really go away. So systemic sclerosis is not a condition that will go away very quickly. But if we are thinking long-term, 10 years, 20 years, we may have to consider these anti-scarring medications to slow down the progression. Even if the medication doesn't make us feel better from a lung perspective, it will help 10 years from now when we will have lost less than without treatment. So. Hopefully this was a, a little bit of an overview of this very, very complex situation where we have an interplay between a skin condition, systemic sclerosis that can affect other organs as well, and lung disease, so interstitial lung disease. And we call this SSC ILD or systemic sclerosis associated ILD. Hopefully this video is interesting to you. If you have further questions, if you'd like me to clarify things about other conditions, other topics related to lung disease, please drop a comment in the below, below the video, and I'll try to answer in future videos. All the best.